Okay, Megan, it is Wednesday, June the 9th. Um, apologies for the dermatological event um, from the doctor earlier, but wow, you are a dumb dumb. Um, so first we talk about Chris Harrison leaving the Bachelor, Bachelorette franchise. Um, got a whopping fucking payout uh, to not have to work again. Um, and, you know, it's, there's some sort of discussion about, you know, his redemption will be able to work again, blah, blah, blah. Uh, who cares? Um, you only told the story about Nick Cannon and his anti-Semitic stuff. And you went on for a very long time about his anti-Semitism and then say, oh, he's reformed because he talked to my friend Barry Weiss. So now he's better. Um, as if, you know, a few conversations with one Jew is going to make you not anti-Semitic anymore. Kind of like the way, um, you know, you, as you said, did all that listening since George Floyd um, was murdered because your friend Sonny Hostin educated you on a whole bunch of stuff so that you didn't look like a fucking racist on TV because um, she was doing you a solid. Uh, and you say how much you've learned and grown. But again, I, I think in that process, you, you think you're done um, because you listened uh, for a hot minute to you know, one black friend um, and to, understand, to try to understand what the whole movement was about. Um, and we know you didn't learn uh, when we get to the next segment, but you go on to talk about The Bachelor um, and the Bachelorette franchise and how problematic it is. And you say there were no Asian people, which is not true. You say there's no black people, which is not true. Is it the most diverse cast uh, over the last 20 years? No, um, but you can't say that there were no Asians and no um, black people and no um, uh, Hispanics or, and I'm still unsure how, if I'm supposed to say Latin X, or I don't even know what I'm supposed to say anymore. Um, so I, I will admit I need some help in um, uh, what to call the community of um, Latin American descent. Um, uh, so anyway, um, so you call them out about, you know, and, you know, only seeing someone who was more than a size zero, one person who was more than a size zero once on the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchise. Um, listen, it, it um, it's, you know, it proposes to be a show about dating and love and falling in love. Nobody believes that bullshit. It's just a show for pretty people to go on and preen um, and, you know, talk about themselves uh, and get on TV. Like, it's not, this, this isn't anything serious. It's not trying to change the world. Um, it, it, it knows what it is and you know in in its attempts to become woke um it's sort of dishonoring the intent that it had and you should understand this as a woman who is such a huge fan of the real housewives um franchises because most of those women aren't actually married um and none of them are housewives, like actual housewives that have, that stay at home and raise kids and take care of the house while the husband goes to work because that doesn't really exist um, in great numbers, nor any of them are real, you know, working parents uh, that aren't ridiculously wealthy. The whole idea of the real housewives has nothing to do with being real or a housewife. So I would think you would be able to understand the genre of uh, reality TV that its whole point um, is to have a heightened experience of something um, and to demonstrate a heightened experience that is outside of the realm of real life. Uh, no, people don't date like that. And you know, if that's the way friends behave to each other on The Real Housewives, then, then people don't actually have friends. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, so, you, you know, you, you missed the mark a little bit in your criticism um, 
of reality TV, but it was a nice, you know, mea culpa to your overlords at, uh, at ABC and Disney to not try to criticize um, other content. Um, but then we get to the whole um, flag waving thing. And now I forget the journalist's name who made the post about being on Long Island and so many Trump flags and Confederate flags and American flags and that it was um, disturbing. And, and you go on this tirade about, you know, America is the best place in the world. You've been all over the world. I don't believe that. Um, and you've never found a place better. And I'm convinced that you think that because other places don't have Flavortown and you can't get your jalapeno poppers, uh, at, you know, in France that you want because they don't have a Flavortown. But, um, you know, you you go on this patriotic thing that you love this country and you name your daughter Liberty and you hope that this, um, uh, this journalist hears your opinion about this country. She wasn't criticizing the United States of America. She's talking about a very specific instance of how the, um, the American flag is being used and weaponized against uh, American citizens, by American citizens. And Sonny was very clear about it. And here's a perfect example of why you didn't learn your lesson through um, the George, Flo George Floyd, George Floyd um, and Black Lives Matter protests, and you didn't learn your lesson from having listened to your friend Sonny once, because you entirely negated everything that she said by saying, this is what the flag means to me and no one can stop me from waving it. Without one care or concern about everything that Sonny just said about why uh, the, the flag waving now makes her uncomfortable because it is very specifically being weaponized currently in this moment. So for you to just dismiss that and not recognize it at all shows you didn't learn and you don't remember to listen, you dumb dumb. And I'm absolutely sure that you uh, being glad that Joy is going to put out her American flag on the 4th of July uh, meant absolutely nothing to Joy Behar. Uh, 